Hey guys, Oscar here for NauticRabs.com. I'm at Affiliate Summit, having a great time. And I ran into the SEO god, Stefan Spencer, and he is the author of The Art of SEO. So here's uh, Stefan Spencer. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Good. Are you having fun at Affiliate Summit? I uh, sure am, yeah. You, uh, you had a session yesterday. I did, yes. What was that about? Well, it's a panel all about SEO, ask me anything okay. uh, session. So also on the panel was Bruce Clay and Duane Forrester. And okay. uh, we actually got some great questions. We talked about voice search and uh, uh, let's see, uh, featured snippets. We talked about um, site migrations, um, e-commerce platforms, all sorts sure. of stuff. Yeah. Do you see a lot, a big shift from say five years ago to today on how SEO is going? Or is it still? Oh, well, there's still tried and true tactics and strategies that worked back then that still work. Okay. But a lot has changed. A lot, you know, machine learning is evolving at such a rapid clip. It's really hard for somebody who's practicing old school SEO to keep up. Okay. Um, and with things evolving, like uh, you know, there's mobile first indexing. With, with there's new algorithm updates like Fred. And uh, you have to worry about being too uh, ad uh, intense with your advertising because you could get hit with the Fred um, uh, penalty or algorithm. And with featured snippets being such a, uh, a big focus, I think folks should really um, in integrate that into their strategy because voice search, if you think about voice search as like, we are more likely to be talking to our computers than we are going to be typing on them. It's like this, the, as big of a difference as, um, so remember, I don't know if you can remember this, but uh, when we went from MS-DOS and you know the command line yep. to a graphical user interface, sure. the GUI, yep. life changing, you know, industry changing, everything, right? So imagine that same scale of change Shift, yeah. when you go from a graphical user interface to a linguistic user interface. Sure. So sure. that's what's going to happen. We're going to be talking to our computers it's so much more efficient, and we're already seeing that with you know, talking to Google Home and Cortana and uh, Alexa. Siri yeah. and sure. you know, Alexa, etc. So if you can get ahead of that game by thinking about like how can I get position zero uh, in in Google, which is going to get me visibility in Google Home and Google Now and so forth when people are talking to Google to get an answer Google's not going to read off 10 blue links it's going to read off the instant answer the one that's the featured snippet and you get more clicks if people are just looking at search results whether on on desktop or mobile it doesn't matter you want to take that featured snippet and you can steal those from your competitors we actually talked about this I'm happy to walk sure. you guys uh, through this um, so essentially what you're going to do is go after the low-hanging fruit. The, the snippets, well, you need to identify where there already are snippets. Okay. Because if you have a, um, a keyword that you're going after and there's a map pack there instead of featured snippets, you're not going to find both. Okay. It's almost never. So if you're going after a keyword that's unlikely to ever fire up a featured snippet, because it's going to fire up a map pack instead, don't waste your time with that keyword. You need to identify keywords where you actually have a shot at, the at getting a f the featured snippet. And if there is no featured snippet, you have zero chance because <laughs> nobody's going to get it. So identify keywords, create a list of keywords, and how do you do that? Use tools like SEMrush, sure. put in your competitors, and say that you want, um, I don't know, one competitor has a whole bunch of featured snippets and you want to steal those featured snippets, not in an evil way, but sure, in a, yeah. you know, just provide you know, better that. value, a more concise, more accurate, better answer to the query mm -hmm. uh, in, in the featured snippet or in a better format. Let's say that you're um, targeting a keyword that's like a, a how-to sort of query. Uh, the best format for an answer of that uh, nature would be a, a list, uh, a, a numbered list snippet. Okay. okay. So how to boil an egg, you type that into Google and you'll see a featured snippet that's one, two, three, four, five. You know, these are the steps of how to boil an egg. If it's a paragraph snippet, that's a weak snippet. It's not a very effective answer. So if you see a paragraph snippet, that's a weak answer and you can steal it. For that type of content? For that particular search query. But if it were, say, a bio of somebody? 
you know, who is Stefan Spencer, then a paragraph would be ideal. Absolutely. Okay. So target contextually the, the right format. Yeah. Now, something I asked you earlier off camera, but now I want to ask you here, how much does the actual, you know, structure, like using schema.org, right. how, how much does that affect the snippets? It doesn't. It doesn't. So yeah, you, you don't need to use schema. I always recommend using schema. Uh, schema.org um, is just... It's, it's a best practice. It's a best practice. Okay. It's, there's no reason not to, unless you're super lazy and you want to do the bare minimum. Or ignorant of the fact that it exists. If you're just an expert at this topic and decide to start writing about it, that may be a little too technical over you, but that's yeah. not going to prevent you from being in the snippet. Person. It won't. Okay. It won't. In fact, you can even get away with not using the right kind of HTML code. So if you want a numbered list snippet, ideally you're going to use OL and LI tags, sure. ordered list tags, right? So that will help you to take that featured snippet in if it's an ordered list snippet that you're trying to, um, sure. to take, right? If you look a lot of times at numbered list snippets at the HTML behind the scenes on the web page, it's actually not OL and LI tags. It's like regular HTML code. There might be H2s or something for each of those items, and there's a chunk of text separating out each of those items, and Google's gone and extracted those headings and built an uh, like an LI type list for that featured snippet. You didn't even have to put the proper HTML in place. So ideally, if you want uh, a bolded list snippet, use UL and LI tags. If sure. you want an ordered list, uh, if you want to go after a, uh, a, a numbered list snippet, then use OL and LI tags. If um, you're going after a paragraph snippet, and that would be the best answer, just sure. normally write as you, as you would. But table snippets, you want to use an HTML table. Okay. Now, something that was uh, interesting that you just, I want to ask you a little further. You mentioned, for example, if you write an article and you have six headings on this, you know, H2, Google might just take that and create that list. Yeah. So does that mean that we still, I mean, should we still create long format, I mean, long text to give a lot of value on the text? Or should we, should we target answering questions directly on a short answer? I mean... That's a great question. So here's... I think the ideal practice for, for this sort of situation. So let's say that you have um, an FAQ page. Yeah. And for me, I, I prefer if I've got uh, enough content on that FAQ page to break it up into multiple pages. So I want to do a deep dive on a particular topic and a particular keyword. Uh, and so let's say that one of my questions is around, uh, in, in my FAQ is, how do you write an effective RFP to hire an SEO? Okay. Right? Because I've seen some really terrible RFPs come across my desk. Sure. You know, because people are asking me to help them with their SEO, and then just it's a, it's a nightmare. So that might be a question that I've put enough to, uh, in, of an answer together that that deserves to be a separate page. And so that page will rank better. It will have a better keyword focus around RFPs for SEO projects, okay. et cetera. And... I think I'd have a better shot at a uh, featured snippet for that. But what if I had a concise answer, kind of like the summer, quick summary? Sure. So I, I repeat the question. Yep. I think you want to have the question as well as the answer. So you have the question, you have a concise kind of summary answer, synopsis, mm -hmm. and then you've got the full detail. Like a read more for the full page. Yeah, but I wouldn't, use, I wouldn't oh. do read more. I wouldn't hide stuff. Oh, okay. It would because just be anything that's hidden like behind a tab or a show more or anything like that is going to get discounted. Oh, okay. So it's not going to get as much weight by Google. You want to have that visible by default. Just in the same inline. So just summarize it and then expand on it. Yeah. Okay. That's that's a I mean that's a pretty good practice for to write anything. Yeah. And if you're going to put all that effort in writing a great FAQ, then why not take those related questions that relate to particular products or services and put the question on those pages as well because that's going to help with your conversion. So let's say that I have a page on SEO consulting, which I do. So you go to stephanspencer.com, you click on you know, work with me, and there's sure. uh, one of the options is consulting. And if I take my best questions and answers from my FAQ pages and then highlight those at the bottom so I preempt buyer objections. Sure. 
right? So how much does it cost, Stefan? Like how long do I need, uh, how long till I get a result? And you know, how many months, uh, is there a minimum length of contract with sure. you, et cetera, et cetera. And I answer all those, but I don't, I don't copy and paste all of the copy because that's duplicate content. Instead, I link mm -hmm. off to the page with the full answer. Sure. I just duplicate Natural the link. question yeah. okay. and make that a link to the Q&A. Sure. That's, I, uh, you're just really making hay that way. All right. Very, very interesting. So I like the idea that, I mean, all the AI and all the new stuff coming up and the voice search is, uh, that was, uh, you answered my question before I even asked, but I was going to ask, what was the, the relative shift on the industry once that actually yeah. takes place? And it's going to be huge. I mean, well, it's already taking place. And yeah. what's going to end up happening is the only way you can keep up with the AIs that Google has yeah. is to have your own AIs. Interesting. Right? How, how do you outsmart an AI with another AI? So are we eventually going to just be removed from the whole equation? And we're just going to be consumers? So... Are you talking about like far future? Are we going to become oh, uh, merged with technology? <laughs> well, or I mean, are you going to be this. This is. I mean, I've been hearing. I've been hearing blogging is dead. All this stuff since yeah, like two thousand. It's all clickbait. Right. SEO is dead. I keep hearing that all the time. Yeah, but this is. The, I mean, just considering all this stuff and especially the answers you've given me. This is the first time I actually consider the possibility that blogging could be dead because, if you get onto the snippet, then people. Are, most people are not going to be typing anymore and analyzing 10 results or two pages of but results. But they'll have the content read to them, and they will, uh, there'll be videos of, uh, like, their, the avatar uh, on, on their personal uh, device will, yeah. like, talk them through this concept. So you'll still provide that amazing content, but uh, it's not going to necessarily be in the... In the format, format of being read uh, by me scanning with my eyeballs. Okay, I, I guess I guess in one of our adaptations will be morphing a call to action to take place in that environment. Yeah, well, because it's not that different from podcasts, right? Sure. So I have to uh, uh, incorporate calls to action in my podcast. So I have two different shows. I have the Optimize Geek and I have Marketing Speak. Right. Both excellent shows you sure. guys should be subscribing to. We'll have all the links down in the description. Yeah. So. It, in, in a podcast episode, I'm not going to get somebody to um, like go and, and fill out a form or, right. or like click. take some yeah. significant action. At best, I might get them to subscribe because that's easy. Sure. Right. So they're listening to the episode and they're like in their podcast player. They can hit subscribe and now they're they're going to get my content yeah. on a regular basis. So it's not that different from YouTube, right? So you, you're sure. not going to get people to sign up for your, an online course just from watching one YouTube video. Right. You're going to get them to take one kind of yeah. baby step. Yeah, progress, yeah. And it's going to be within that platform, typically. Like subscribe or watch another video. Um, yeah, so okay. think about how can I move people forward in, in the buyer journey, in the funnel, yep. that makes sense for that particular platform. So as people are having stuff read to them more, Right. So audio books and so forth, we're already seeing that. Sure. People are not spending time reading a whole book. They're just having it read to them uh, from Audible or whatever. So how do I incorporate a call to action? Got it. Very, very interesting. Well, um, Stefan, thanks a lot. Um, where, where can people find... I mean, I know you talked a little bit about stuff, but give us a list of where to find you. And Yeah, for sure. So stefanspencer.com is my main site where you can get... I don't know, hundreds of articles that I've written over the years. I write for Search Engine Land and a bunch of other places. So um, so there's archived webinars or videos there, all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, I also have my two podcasts, Marketing Speak, uh, marketingspeak.com. You can go um, get all the, the links and past episodes, the subscribe buttons for sure. Google Play and, and um, you know, yeah. iTunes and all that. And all my other podcast is The Optimized Geek, so optimizegeek.com for that one. Uh, that's a biohacking, life hacking, kind of uh, you know, personal development podcast. Sure. It's not an SEO podcast, even though it sounds like it from the name. And um, I also uh, have uh, an online course, or multiple online courses um, available on stephanspencer.com if right. you want to do a deep dive into, into SEO. Sure. And then I, I've, I've subscribed to a lot of stuff, and it's amazing. Even the free stuff is better than paid courses I've, I've taken. So 
definitely go check them out. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Hey, uh, Stephen, St Stephen, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> the SEO God. He's gonna answer some questions for us. Yeah. Hey. How you doing, SEO? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> How are you doing? How are you doing, affiliate? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go in the food review. Let's try that again. <laughs>